black American Express card showed up in a James Bond briefcase. Then when the credit cards came along, wow. Where I wrote a check for 106 or 108,000 bucks for one month. For one month. John Salisbury, a Fox 4 contributor, was, was a baller back in the day. Patrick Ewing once said, we spend a lot because we make a lot. That's true for many athletes. They get paid a lot. That's true, as it turned out. It's too much for some people sometimes. Athlete overindulgent. It's the top indulgence. It's the top of the latest ESPN 30 for 30 documentary series. This one leads off the season tonight. It's called Broke. Very successful series. Ed Butowski joining me. Ed's a wealth manager. He's prominently featured in the, the documentary that I'll, I guess be running most of the month. Was that kind of how it Yeah, and there'll be another one that starts off, um, I think, next week. Right. And, and they kind of rotate. 30 for 30 is a great series. Yeah, it is. And this is the big one for this week called Broke. All right. You, you feel sorry for these guys. We, we make fun of them. They right. make $100 million, $200 million, and we hear every month somebody's gone broke, yeah. and everybody's like, ah, what an idiot. But you, you it's don't a, there's a different There's a different story. First of all, a lot of the people who are in this film didn't go broke and okay. actually are doing very well financially. I mean, you take a Cliff Floyd, a Rondell White, Jamal Mashburn, Winford Tubbs. Most of the people in the film volunteered their time to bring attention okay. to the issues and the lifestyle. But what about the guys who... <clears throat> Well, well there's some very know. sad stories. I mean, Bernie Kosar is one of the saddest stories of all. Former I mean, uh, he was a former cowboy and spent a lot of time in Cleveland Rams, Browns. Sure. And then there's uh, Keith McCants. The, it really humanizes these athletes. And what it really also does is it focuses the attention on what a lot of people do. They like to make fun of these people. We read about it all the time. And the real issue is uh, really people like me, people who manage money, who don't communicate well, the people they surround themselves around, it's the system. And I try to go out of my way to explain to people, because I know a lot of athletes very well, and I try to explain to people that it's the system that's the problem, it's not these athletes. There's no reason in the world, Steve, any of these people should know how to manage money, all right? Unless they were taught, and it's our job to teach them. All right, let's. There's a, we got a clip. We know you want to watch a couple clips, so let's see, right. let's see a clip. Here we go. It's a, uh, talking about some of the lash, lavish spending they do. We're talking about throwing money up and actually coming down like raindrops. For a professional athlete, I think it's making the rain in my mind is going to a strip club. And you just throw all your stacks in the air and just let it fall over all the women. You know, I don't want to get in trouble with my wife here. We've moved far beyond raining to tsunamis. We're going to new levels. We're making it snow. And you flick them off. We start throwing $100 bills instead of fives. So then we got a competition going on now. As shallow as that seems, as shallow as that is, um, yeah, I've been there. That's all ego, though, right? Well, there's and that goes with being an athlete. You, I mean, to yeah. be a good athlete, you have to have an ego. But that's also strip club kind of rap music. Be the guy in that song. Be the player. Be the man. Right. There's a little bit of that, but there's another part where. For instance, Cliff Floyd is a wonderful family man. He has great kids. You've never seen a better father in your life. There's a whole other side to these people that people don't see. This show does a great job of talking about the money in the athletes, but it, what it does miss out on is how wonderful most of these people are. And that's what I want to help to communicate better, is that it's a system. And the same thing that they go through, go, we, we see all around Dallas, people overspending, lavish spending, and waiting for the next big dollar to come in. I was talking to some people today, some buddy of my, buddies of mine before we went, uh, came to work, and I said, you know, if you went down a laundry list of Fortune 500 CEOs, yes. a lot of these guys might also be behaving that way. All right, let's look at another uh, a classic example of kind of how athletes try to one-up each other when they have some money. Clothes, shoes, what's the latest Nike? What's the latest Jordan to come out? 20 to 25 pairs of Nike Air Force Ones and all kinds of different colors in a player's locker. These girls will come around you know, selling suits, three linen suits, socks, ties, dress shirts, cufflinks, package deal, $15,000 off. They will have the single, double, triple, home run, grand slam packages. You're talking about $50,000 for, for, for clothes. I'm glad these guys are your friends, Ed, I mm -hmm. am, mm -hmm. but I'm not feeling sorry for them. I think you want right. me to, but I'm not. I'm not feeling sorry at all. And I'm wondering, you know, if a lot of this is self-made. You say they don't have the, the access to the knowledge, mm -hmm. but they got, they got a lot of money. Mm -hmm. If they just didn't behave like that, they, they'd probably be okay. Well, spending is a problem, okay? And look, they're young guys, but the real problem comes in where there's private equity investments, over-allocation private equity, over-allocation in real estate. Now let's talk a little about that, because we heard okay. some of the stats, 79% of football players mm -hmm. go broke in the five years after uh, their career ends, mm -hmm. and 60% of NBA basketball players. But you do say, you talked about the stock market. I do think it's interesting. If you're mm -hmm. invested in the stock market, you know, whatever you got, even a, a small mutual fund or whatever, right. 
it's very hard to lose money over a long period of time. But these, my buddy's got a restaurant, I want to open a car wash, that's where, that's where you is. lose money. That's where it is. It's the private investments where you invest in a car wash, um, a bowling alley, like Vince Young invested in a restaurant down mm -hmm. in Austin. It's the spending along with that type of investing. But if you put your money in the stock market, there's only been two 10-year rolling periods right. where you lost that's money in stocks in the, the history. So it's again, it's the education. But this is more where, you say that's more where athletes put their money, not that's the right. stock market. It's, it's these... Right. They put money. about 90, 95% of their money where they should have less than 5%. Well, you gotta wrap this up, but you got a funny story about a deal somebody brought. You know, yeah. what's the funniest one? Well, probably the one with the with the tomatoes. I mean, someone came to me and said, "I have a friend of mine who who has a tomato farm, but he makes really really big tomatoes, really big ones. huge tomatoes, and it should be a great investment." The tomatoes are in everything. In ketchup, right? right in, in ketchup, ketchup as well. And, and yeah, you, you, you see them all, and there's lots of different deals. We see them every day in everyday did life. Did you dissuade the tomato investment? Did we we did not do the tomato investment. Nice job, Ed Vitasky. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Lassie.